It's your I Am Team here. I'm here with Tyler, Victoria, Katie, and Caitlin for the latest edition of I Am In Your Living Room with our brilliant guest, Shania Fastier. Shania is a multi-talented young woman who sings, acts, models, and is a published author. At only 10 years of age, she became a motivational speaker, and then three years later, at the age of 13, she graduated high school. Adding to her list of achievements, her new up-and-coming book out this year is being turned into a screenplay for film and television. She was recently named a finalist in the International Latino Book Awards. Not only a writer, she has written and released multiple singles and is producing more music in the next months. She's an exemplary example of being smart and sexy and is headed for even bigger things in the future. Welcome to I Am In Your Living Room and thank you for joining us, Shania. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> So, as an author, where do you get your inspiration for your characters in your books? Um, for my first three books that I published, um, basically I was writing about myself, so and so that was fun. And then my fourth book, I included uh, uh, stories uh, about real people that I actually met. So some of those names, uh, the, uh, my fourth book, Bully in the Mirror, is basically I used stories of people that talk to me about their uh, issues with bullying or their own bullying story, and I used some of their own names. Um, but for my fifth book, which is my first fiction novel, I like uh, using a lot of symbolism in anything that I do. So the uh, majority of the names that I use in my fifth book are uh, kind of referencing nature, seasons. Uh, my main character's name is actually Willow, so she's representing the season fall. And then I have a character, Ira, and she's representing the season winter because Ira means snow. So um, I like um, definitely uh, symbolism in everything. So definitely symbolism would be where I get inspiration from. Very cool. Cool. Can you tell us what the genre of your screenplay is going to be? Uh, the genre of my screenplay is actually going to be kind of inspired off of my fifth book, and it's going to be fantasy sci-fi. Um, it's a little bit different. It's it's It has a little bit of a paranormal aspect to it. It's very, very exciting. So I'm working on that screenplay, and then I'm working also on another screenplay as well. It's going to be purely uh, drama, um, and it's going to be inspired off of uh, real-life events, basically about what's been happening in the news lately uh, with certain certain big kind of headlines that people have been talking about um, that I can't really talk too much about. But uh, So I'm writing one screenplay, it's sci-fi, fantasy, and then one is drama. What inspired you to write your web series, MD Squared? MD Squared is a web series inspired by uh, not necessarily teenage problems, but people, but that problems that sometimes uh, teens have, and one of those being mental illness. So the main character in, in MD Squared, her name is May, and she's struggling with anxiety, um, depression, and that may have even turned into a little bit of schizophrenia. So I think what inspired me to do that was kind of what people go through when they're in a certain mind state. Um, I've also, I've been very interested in psychology, so that aspect definitely inspired me to create a web series based on that. Um, right now the web series isn't up, I actually just took it down because I'm in the middle of filming the last two episodes and um, I'll be putting that back up soon because I'm also releasing music videos soon so I didn't want it to really contradict. Um, so the next two episodes will be up soon but it's definitely it's definitely been interesting writing considering that I, I have no idea, I don't have first-hand experience of having um, you know, schizophrenia or, or depression so it, it took a lot of research definitely bullying the, my bullying aspect of myself, uh, that that knowledge helped in one way. But it, w it was definitely a journey kind of going into that mind state of a person that is struggling with severe anxiety or depression. So um, in psychology, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty interesting. So. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really awesome. Yeah, it's really interesting. So um, what actors or actresses inspire your acting? Um, I, uh, <laughs> I have a complete long list of people mm -hmm. that I, I thoroughly enjoy watching on television and movies. Um, I, my, uh, three of those being Jen, Jared Bedelecki, Jensen Ackles, Mish Collins, uh, wrote that a little bit about the interview we did on the website. Um, 
so they're they're definitely a heavy inspiration for me. <laughs> but um, I also I have a a love for Kate Winslet and and Jennifer Lawrence and um Angelina Jolie. So people, people you're uh, women that have just this versatile range. Jennifer Lawrence, she's amazingly funny. And she can also play drama really well. She can also play crazy really well. So I think she's extremely talented, and I love her to death. I'm also starting to really fall in love with Shailene Woodley. Um, because, yeah, Shailene Woodley is great. So, um, th yeah, I, 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 I kind of pick up a lot of things from a lot of different people. So if I see a certain movie one day, I'll kind of look at somebody and say, okay, you're inspiring me really, really heavy for this week. I'm going to stalk you for this week. I'm going to tell you our life story this week. <laughs> it constantly changes. So you started out... Um, kind of talking a little bit about your motivational speaking. So do you ever get anxiety when you're in front of an audience like that? And what do you do to be less anxious when you're um, in front of an audience? Um, since, since I've been pretty much in front of an audience since I was 10 years old, it's, been, it's I've gotten very used to it. So I don't, I don't get nervous. I never have. I don't really get anxious. I never have. There is that ex excitement, like that adren adrenaline build right before you start speaking, but it's not necessarily ex anxiety. It's more like excitement. You know, it's like, oh, I want to get up here. I want to go speak. I want to. I want to do this really, really bad. And um, once you're once you're pretty much in that mind state, it comes easy. So I mean, I, I know a lot of people that that do have a lot of um, problems with public mm -hmm. speaking. And my thing is, you know. The, the hardest part of doing anything is beginning it. The start is always the hardest part. Once you get into it, it's so much easier and it's so much faster. And once you see that you have the audience's attention, it just gets that much easier. Mm -hmm. Right. So, like, what would be your favorite part about motivational speaking? It would definitely be communicating because communicating is the most important key in life with anything. Everything needs communication one way or another. Everybody communicates in one way. And I think uh, my favorite part of going up there is kind of communicating with these kids. It's getting to know these kids and these kids getting to know me. And, and it's kind of, it's very friendly and it's, I, I'm being their friend and I'm, I'm making them aware that I'm there for them and I'm not there for me or anything else. I'm, I'm there for them. I'm there to talk to them. I'm there to help them. And I think it's that's that's the best part for me. It's them knowing that they have somebody to trust. Them knowing that they have somebody to listen to. And when they come to me and tell me that I'm awesome or I'm fun or I'm their inspiration or I'm their role model, it's it's that much better. Like knowing that I can I go in every speaking event wanting to help only one person. And if I help just one person, my my job is basically finished. Now let's talk, now let's talk about your music. How would you describe your music to us? My music is very odd, in a sense. Um, I'm not. I'm not a pop singer. I I, I enjoy all genre, genres of music, um, especially classic rock. But um, my my music is is a mix between folk. It has a little jazz. It has a uh, rock influences, alternative. It's it's basically like a month. A lot of producers say that I have weird uh, timing on my songs, and that's all done purposely. Um, my music is also very lyrical. Um, I'm also heavily involved uh, or inspired by symbolism. So um, I have a lot of uh, metaphorical terms, and, and it's, it's very odd, but it's, it's very intriguing to me, especially writing. And people say that they really pay attention to my lyrics, and they're really starting to understand, you know, what I'm writing about, like one of my songs called Dreaming Lucidly. And it's, it's, it's about, um, you know, being in a dream and not knowing if you're, you're – it's like a deja vu feeling, not knowing if something is real or if something is fake. And um, – so again, I'm heavily inspired by symbolism and, and psychology and, and paranormal and, and all the other fun stuff. <laughs> what inspires you to write music? Um, life, basically, because everything in life, there, a lot of people handle very different life instances very, very differently. And um, the way that I handle something thrown at me, like a, like a hurdle, is I write about it, and I kind of flip that around, and I turn it into something else. So um, if I'm dreaming, uh, I, I like one of my song, my song "Few Years," it's um, it's I'm it's the first three lyrics is I'm standing at a crossroad, and it's a lot of people think, oh, she's talking about selling her soul. That's bad. No, no, and it's really about uh, the symbolism behind it is. You want something so bad that you're willing to give everything you have for it. 
And sometimes that may not be the best option because you're literally giving all you have and you're basically selling your name for whatever fame, if that's something that you're chasing. And it might backlash on you and it might turn back and karma will come back and say and take everything away from you again. And so so that's basically what Few Years is about. So. Okay, great. So um, can you perform one of your songs for us? Yeah, actually, the song that I was just talking about, Few Years, is um, is kind of my, my favorite song, my, probably one of my favorite songs that I've ever written. So um, uh, I would love to sing maybe the first verse in chorus a cappella. Yeah, please. Thank you. Okay. I'm standing at a crossroad Trying to get a ticket, trying to get in I know I'll have to pay for my sin I'm standing in the middle, right in the middle Praying to the sky, I'm down on my knees Do I have to do this? Tell me, please. I've still got a few years to go before I meet who I sold my soul to. Still got a few years to go before I pay the price. Still got some time on the clock before I drop down below. I've still got a few years to go before I say goodbye. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was so good. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So how do you describe um, your personal style as far as fashion? My fashion is very, it, my, I always say that my closet is like Narnia. There, there are so many different um, aspects and, and different personalities in my closet. It's insane. It's like I have multiple personalities. Um, um, I love, especially, I love thrift shopping. And I, mind you, I uh, thrift shopping was cool before Macklemore made it cool. Um, so, um, I love thrift shopping. I love um, finding vintage things. I love vintage looks. Um, the twenties era, the seventies era, the eighties era. So. My my style ranges definitely from the twenties to the two thousands, <laughs> but um, everything is everything is very unique and and it's very colorful. I also I also organize my closet by color uh, because I'm a little bit OCD in that way. <laughs> but it's very it's very different. It's it's very it's very fun. It's very free flowing, and it's depending on the mood that I'm in. I'm in I'm in the day. That depends how I'm going to look that day. Um, I actually have kind of a clothing line in development. It's it's with a, a, a man. His, uh, his his clothing line is called Tailored Blue, and basically it's neckties and bow ties, fedoras, scarves, uh, suspenders. Basically an accessory line that I'm that's actually in development right now. So that's what I'm working on fashion wise. That's awesome. Everything. It's incredible. So I know that you're only 15, which is, like, blowing my mind right now because, like, you have so many things going on. <laughs> but how has your style evolved in your 15 years of life? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I, from, from the time until I was about maybe 13, I would only wear jeans and T-shirts. And that's it. I would not experiment. I didn't want to buy anything else but jeans, and I didn't want to buy anything else but T-shirts. And that was my thing. Um, that's what I basically what I felt comfortable in. And I think, like, right when I turned 13, I was like, I'm going to go and spend $200 at, at the mall and go crazy. So um, I, I, I definitely have um, have had my hits or misses with, with certain <laughs> certain things. Um, I, I've definitely learned to match things better. Definitely learned that <laughs> patterns do clash with each other. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty, I, I'm, I'm kind of loving it, experimenting right now, though, so. Very cool. <laughs> so, what is your fashion advice for other teenagers? Definitely experiment. Um, there, and also, experimenting is key, because you never know really what you like until you're in it, and, and you might see something on the hanger, but it might look totally different on you. So um, my thing, my my 
uh, advice would be just experiment and go out there and if you see something that you like wear it and if somebody doesn't like it who cares um, and also learn how to dress to your uh, how you look how your body type is how how your your face shape is um, with makeup and experiment with makeup and you never really know until you try something so just don't be afraid to take risks and don't be afraid to also make mistakes with something because mistakes are the only way that you can grow from and mistakes you can uh, learn from and that's the only way that you are going to really find out who you are is by making those mistakes so at IAM, we are huge con advocates of the concept, smart is sexy. You can have the beauty and the brains all at the same time. So how do you juggle working hard and looking good? <laughs> I've heard so many, this is so funny, because I've heard so many people say that it's, it, or not so many, but I've heard a lot of, so, some people say that it's uh, important, It's beauty is more important than brains. Because beauty will get you farther in life, or 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 there's still the opposite. Brains is more important than beauty. Brains will get you far in life. But I think it's really important to take care of yourself, not only mentally but physically as well. Um, I think that when you look good, you automatically feel good, and and it's also very important to learn to love yourself. Um, there, there. It's very important to take care of yourself, more specifically, because there's so many, uh, there's just this image perceived of beauty out there, and it's, it's not, there is not one image of beauty. Everybody is, has their own beautiful. Everybody has their own normal. Everybody is their own person. Nobody is a clone of each other. If everybody was a clone of everybody, it would be very boring. Um, <laughs> so I think it's very important to balance both. It's, it's, education is extremely important. Take care of your mind, exercise your brain, read a book. Books are so fun. It's, it's like <laughs> you're diving into this world. Yeah. It's, like, it, it, it's, it's very important to be smart and it's very important to look good while doing it. So might as well do both. <laughs> <laughs> How has being smart and sexy helped you in your success? I think that um, I think that being any if you're intellectual or if you are if you want to be intellectual or if you want to learn and, and grow and, and become knowledgeable of a certain thing, it will definitely get you far in life. As at, and I think that if you have an interest in something, to just run with it. If you if you really like art, you want to go and research everything you can about art. If you want to go, if you like psychology, you want to go and research everything you can about psychology. And that's pretty much what I did. I, as I dove into everything that I really love. You know, I, I really love art, so I dove into art. And I love writing, so I dove into writing. And I really love supernatural, so I dove into supernatural. Um, <laughs> so um, I think any, as if you, if you really know that you are interested in something, and you really are confident that you can do it, or uh, go Go ahead and do it, and be confident that you can do it. And there is no nothing wrong with also uh, looking beautiful and being beautiful while doing it, um, because there there is are two kinds of beauty. It is inner beauty, and you do have outer beauty. And and you have to be in in order to be beautiful on the outside. You have to have to be beautiful on the inside. And education and intellect and knowledge is one of the most beautiful things. I totally agree with you. Um, what quality do you find most sexy in a person, though? What quality do I find? Oh, um, it would definitely be uh, if you are able to to listen and also it's to give and receive. So everybody, I, I think that if somebody has something that they are willing to give you, and if it's if it's knowledge on something, or it, especially if it's knowledge on something, I think that is really awesome because I love to learn from other people. I love to hear people's life stories. I love to hear what advice people have for certain occasions. So um, I, I think that the 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 coolest thing is that when you can really have a free flowing conversation and even a debate with somebody, a very nice intellectual debate is never bad because. You you not only learn a lot from that person that you're talking to or and or debating with, but you're also learning a lot from yourself. And it's and it's and it's okay to have different opinions from somebody else. Sometimes that's even better. Like they do say, opposites attract. So I think having an awesome conversation, an awesome debate, and being able and for somebody to be able to to teach you something that you never knew before is pretty cool. Now time for some fun questions. So what is your favorite TV show? Supernatural. Come <laughs> <Of course. laughs> <Hold> out, of course. <laughs> <laughs>
Are you a flats or heels girl? Heels, most definitely. I have over 34 pairs. Wow. Heels. Jared Pilecki or Jensen Ackles? Jensen Ackles. I love both, <laughs> but Jensen Ackles. <laughs> I would totally agree with you on that one. <laughs> What's your guilty pleasure? Oh, um, either it, it would have to be uh, really, really hard classic rock, like really, really heavy, um, really heavy classic rock or adventure time. Like head smashing music? Like you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Who is your celebrity crush? Uh, <laughs> Jensen Ackles. <laughs> <laughs> Go to karaoke song. Um, Rolling in the Deep by Adele. Oh, that is such a good call. That is making fun. That's fantastic. <laughs> Macchiatos <laughs> or Frappuccinos? Ooh, Frappuccinos. No doubt. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Beach resort or ski resort? That's a really hard one because I really love the snow, but I also really love the beach and the ocean. But I'm going to have to say... Um, uh, beach resort. Awesome. Are you an early bird or a night owl? I am a 100% night owl. <laughs> I do not like waking up early. Same I'm here. staying up late and never, it's sometimes not going to sleep at all. Um, I'm totally okay with staying up for 24 hours straight, working or reading and doing something. I, I don't, probably shouldn't be doing at 3 in the morning, but um, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> most, definitely a night owl. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite quote? Um, I love everything, every almost every single page of The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Uh, so what would you do if you had $100,000 right now? I I would definitely definitely give away part of it to charity because $100,000 is a lot of money. Um, so I would give some of that money away to charity, and then with the rest of the, the money, I would use it to, to find and purchase a 1967 Chevrolet Impala. Whoa. <laughs> that is a good, good, good Four way to more, black, yeah. Um, and I would probably use the rest to buy books and, and journals and sketchbooks and another laptop. I don't know. <laughs> That's great. Um, so at IAM, we run an interactive anti-bullying campaign all year round to encourage teens to be the one who takes the ultimate stand to bullying using the hashtag BeTheOneWho on social media to promote awareness and community support. So we want to talk about your anti-bullying book that you wrote. What inspired you to write Bully in the Mirror? I think what inspired me the most was was kids that kids in general. I mean, there I I I couldn't. I mean, I had friends who were at the verge of suicide, um, and I I have had to be the one that had to, had to stay on the phone with them till three in the morning or four in the morning, talking to them and making sure that they were okay. Mm -hmm. um, so so I think I think definitely what inspired me was just that feeling of waking up and then knowing that a person that you knew just wasn't there anymore. Just the thought that, oh, this person committed suicide. This person literally killed themselves because they wanted to escape the pain and the hate that they get uh, tossed to every single day. Mm -hmm. So I think that just that, that thought of, of knowing that somebody would just, somebody could literally just be gone from one minute to the next um, inspired me the most. And, and just the thought of people having to go through that, people, families having to go through that, friends having to go through that, and I, I, I don't think it's right for anybody to have to be able to go through that, knowing that somebody that they love and care about killed themselves because um, they couldn't handle the pain. So that definitely inspired me because I, I wanted to help. I wanted to be part of the, the positive change and the positive um, role of the ocean against this. So definitely I, I, wanted to, I wanted to definitely help kids mm -hmm. in general and people in general. Was there anything that surprised you when you were researching the impacts of bullying while writing Bully in the Mirror? If there is one thing that surprised me is that bullying really does start very, very early on in life. Um, I've spoken to 
audiences ranging from ages 5 to 75 and probably older. Um, and bullying really does start very young. When I speak to kindergarten audiences, it's they are they are talking about a kid, you know, calling them names or a kid pushing them around. And and I think that surprised me the most is that it it starts literally right after you are born. You are literally thrown into this world kicking and screaming, and you know you're you're thrown into this world that that not may not always be so positive. And it, bullying really starts really young. And I think the most important thing is to teach kids very, very early on in age to 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 really be respectful and to really love and to really be kind to one another and be kind to themselves and to really know that everybody needs to be taken care of in this world and everybody needs uh, a shoulder to cry on sometimes and um, definitely to teach kids that it's it's okay it's just because if you are going through something and most likely because bullying comes from home, if you are going through something at home, um, you do not have to reflect onto other people what has been reflected onto you. It's, you have the power to change it. Um, so I, as much as I think bully, uh, victims of bullying can get past the, the torment, I also believe that uh, bullies themselves can change because bullying is a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> never thought of it that way. So what advice do you have for teens who are bullied in terms of standing up for themselves or building self-esteem or, you know, having someone to go talk to? Like, what do you suggest that they do if they're presented, if they find themselves in this situation? There, There is uh, something that I always tell people is that there is not only one solution to every problem, but there are things that you can do to prevent your problem from happening. And um, it's what, like I said before, one of the most important things is communication and also uh, keeping your inner power. Um, it's something that I just speak really, really strongly about all the time is keeping your inner power and making sure that you know that you are an important human being and knowing that you are powerful and knowing that the bullies cannot use your power as their own. And I think that the most important thing is being confident in who you are, being confident in your inner power and being having your self-esteem uh, built up. And there are things that you can and do to build your self-esteem. Like instead of looking in the mirror and saying all the negative things about yourself. You look in the mirror and say all the positive things, you, all the things that you love about yourself. And automatically your brain subconsciously will start thinking of those good things. And, and I think that uh, just being powerful as, as, uh, as, not necessarily as a victim, but as a person is the most important thing. And, 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 being, and knowing that you are not alone, that there are people willing to help that, and also not being afraid to go to help. Because I know that sometimes Kids might feel that the bullies might go after them if they tattletale, but that's not the case. Um, I find that 95% of the time that victims go and get help from a, 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 an, a, an adult or a, a, any kind of adult, a teacher, a parent, an aunt, an uncle, that the bullying somehow, the bullying does somehow get put to an end. And once one person sees somebody doing something, the other person will, and that's why also the bystanders are very afraid. And um, you might be the only person that would be willing to help. And you help by helping, you might even be able to save their life. So it's definitely going to an adult and getting help and, and, and making sure that, that um, things will be put to, it, put to a stop. Yeah. So where do you want to see yourself in three years? Um, I want to see that, um, I, I really, I, the only reason why I started this, uh, or start World Bully in the Mirror was to help people and, and to build an empire and to, to be a positive influence on, on kids and, and not just kids, but people in general. Um, I, I really want to be a positive influence and I want to be able to say that I have my own empire. I have, I have written these books and I have written these films and I have, I have inspired these people, and I have done this for the world, and I want to be able to to give back whatever I can. Um, I, I want to be able to have an empire, and I, I want to be able to open my hotel in Vegas, and I want to continue being um, inspiring and, and, and passionate about bullying and influential and all that, but um, I, I also really want to develop creatively. I want to more explore more into my music. I love music. I'm passionate about my music, and I also want to explore into the film industry and directing and producing. Um, 
So there were just a lot of things that I really, really want to do that are on my bucket bucket list, like directing my first film. Um, so so definitely, <laughs> just exploring life. Um, you said you want to open a hotel in Vegas. Yes, yes, ma'am. I do. Cool. <laughs> Wow. Literally, I've never heard anybody say that in my I life. Know. <laughs> I know. Like, I love Vegas, yeah. and I stay at your hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be going to Vegas soon for the uh, Latino Book Awards, so I'll be. I'm really, really super excited. So cool. Oh that is so That's cool. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, last question. What advice do you have for teenagers who want to follow their dreams, whether it be in acting or singing or writing? Don't, there's, sometimes kids can sometimes be afraid of who they are, be afraid of who they want to be, or be afraid of the future and what comes at them. And I think the most important thing is to just not be afraid. It's, it's, it's that, that, even if even if you are even if you are afraid and you tell yourself that you are fearless and that you can go at this and you go at this kicking and screaming guns blazing you know that's the most important thing is that you go at it even if you are afraid you go at it because sometimes being afraid is so important because it kind of shows you kind of who you are as a person and once you once you once you go into something you go into head first your fear. You really experience your fear. If your fear is going to the recording studio for the first time and recording a song and you do that for the first time, you'll learn that your fear is actually really harmless. And things will just get so much easier from there. So don't be afraid of your fears. Go into them head first. Chase after what you love. Love who you love. Love what you love. Um, and don't don't be afraid to be loved as well. Is never never reject compassion and sympathy and empathy and also remember to be sympathetic, empathetic and and um, compassionate about about people and also things and, and life and, and just um, be 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 out and be and also also be humble about it. Don't don't go around uh, bragging about something. If you got something and you go bragging about something, it, sometimes karma can come back and. And I also, I'm a very strong believer in karma, so never, never, um, like, something I always say, never reflect on two other, and uh, the, try not to reflect negatively onto others if you have been negatively reflected onto, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was such an inspiring interview. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk with us. We really wish you the best of luck in all your career endeavors, and I'm sure we will be hearing more great things from you in the future. Don't forget to follow her on Twitter at Shania Fastier and visit her website at www.shaniafastier.com. Also, follow us on Twitter at IAM, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check us out at IAM.com. You can find all this information in the description box below. Join us next time for IAM in Your Living Room, featuring some of the newest up-and-coming teens and young adults just like you. Thank you so much for coming tonight. This was so much fun. Thank you so much. Have a great time. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.